Please rewind this cassette. So my pitch for Superman movie, The Man of Tomorrow, is Superman is the supporting character in this movie. This movie would follow a Jimmy Olsen or a Lois Lane, somebody who works at the Daily Planet. Them getting their job, paying their rent, all of that stuff. And then all of a sudden, Superman shows up into the story. Either Superman shows up and saves some people, they see Superman, they hear rumblings of Superman, so they get sent on a case to investigate Superman. So Lois Lane or Jimmy Olsen, but let's just say Lois Lane for the sake of this. Although I think Jimmy Olsen would be a great lead character. Lois Lane goes out and she starts to investigate the Superman sightings and who is the Superman character. And some of this goes back to the Donner film. So she's trying to figure out who the fuck is the Superman guy? Where does he come from? And she's doing real journalism. Like the movie is her going and doing interviews with people. She's trying to get photo sources. She's trying to validate these sources. It's got this uh, like all the president's men feel to it. She's, she's really doing the investigation. She's doing investigative reporting. And uh, Lois Lane at this point in the story is not a top reporter. She's trying to work her way up. I would not make it that Lois Lane's like stable in her job. She's even maybe her job's even a little bit on the line a little bit. Maybe you could comment on how newspapers aren't really selling anymore. But let's say like after the first act, a new guy comes to work at the Daily Planet. His name's Clark Kent. He's a supporting character in this movie, mind you. I'm not saying this movie is not about Clark Kent. So he comes into the movie, and Lois at first is kind of like, well, what's with this guy? This guy's an awkward, nerdy guy and all that stuff. But, you know, he gets assigned on assignment with her, so he starts coming back around with her. And and so him and her kind of start making a bond and all that stuff. But then she ends up getting interactions with Superman. And she actually gets an interview with Superman. Um, This would be very similar to the the wonderful scene in the original Superman where she talks to him and he's like, Lois, I never lie. And she she gets to ask him some questions like that and and find out what's going on with them and she gets kind of wooed by Superman. So then Lois Lane is kind of in this odd way pursuing this relationship with Superman even though she's kind of scared of him. And she's kind of just trying to use him to get a story. She's like, well, maybe I can get this guy to come over and hang out with me and I can write all this stuff down and get some photos and all that stuff. Um, meanwhile, while this is happening, she's starting to kind of get won over by Clark Kent. Clark Kent's kind of starting to, to win her over. She's like, no, there's actually sides to this guy that I really like. So then she gets a little conflicted because she actually likes Clark Kent, but she needs Superman for this story. So there's this, it be, kind of becomes a love triangle movie and it turns into something like the Philadelphia story with Superman being like the Cary Grant and Jimmy Stewart being the Clark Kent. So she doesn't really know what to do. So you have these scenes that I think would be very funny where she goes on a date with Superman, and then she goes on a date with Clark Kent. And Clark Kent, the audience, we know that he's the same person, but Lois Lane doesn't know he's the same person uh, from her from her point of view. So from her point of view, she's in this love triangle and she doesn't really know what to do. Um, but Clark is ultimately winning her heart. So as the story goes on, uh, more more threats start to occur. Let's say a bad guy gets introduced, but really all in the background. Like we see this from Lois Lane's point of view. So like she's watching the news and she sees a bad guy who announces something on the television. So she goes to the scene. So the final half hour of the movie, she goes to this final conflict to get photos. Maybe she brings Jimmy also with her. He's her videographer. He's filming it. She's wondering like, where's Clark? And then they go and they film this big set piece. And it's kind of like the Man of Steel ending, except not as crazy. But it, it's kind of the idea that he had at the beginning of Batman v Superman. But this is when it really turns into Marvels. So at the end, she goes to film this battle going on. And it's all done from like a camera from Lois Lane, uh, from her and Jimmy Olsen. So we're seeing the whole thing from that point of view. So you're getting to see these awesome Superman fight scenes, but it's cut up while her and Jimmy are trying to dodge and hide from collateral damage hauling and not die. She gets a shot of Superman catching somebody falling off of the building and laying them down safely. And it's like, wow, that's amazing. You know, so we get like a whole like 20 minute action sequence, but it's all from this point of view of the camera, much like Marvel's. In this story, Superman saves the day. He saves the world. Everything's fine. And even even her investigating journalism, like a part of it would be the, the way we would get the Superman mythos is through Clark Kent being a supporting character. He tells her about Smallville and his life there. We don't have her go to Smallville and all that shit like in the Zack Snyder movies. He just tells her like, oh, I grew up in Smallville. These were my parents. And uh, so we get the final action set piece in the Superman movie. But it's like we've never seen a Superman action scene before. Now, my my idea was that it would create a sense of awe because you're seeing it from that point of view of a camera. 
and on a ground level, you're not seeing it, which is why I think it worked better in Batman v Superman, that opening sequence. Because I think it would be greater for us to see the grandeur of Superman through someone else's eyes. It, it, the idea is to create a sense of awe that you're seeing Superman from her perspective. Uh, to reintroduce Superman to the public, you show it through the eyes of someone else. And you see these grand moments. It works so well on Marvels. That's really the inspiration here. That you see the death of Gwen Stacy, but you see it through this guy's point of view and how it affects him. How this affects Lois. And it makes us see the grandeur of Superman. And if she really sees him as the hero and loves him, it would hopefully make audiences see the great things about Superman and love him a little bit more. He comes into this person's life and changes the world. And it changes everyone. And she has a direct link with it. She's the first one to communicate with him. She's the first one to get footage of this kind of stuff. It would be like found footage Superman, yeah. The third act, and the whole movie wouldn't be that way. So she gets this footage, she publishes her story, it makes her famous. This is the story that makes her famous and puts her at the top. The name of the article, The Man of Tomorrow, by Lois Lane. And at the end, she is... As she she kind of decides that she doesn't really want a Superman, she's getting one over um, by Clark Kent, and it kind of ends with her on a good side. Now, maybe at the end of this movie, Clark Kent tells her he's Superman. I would prefer if he didn't. Maybe have a final joke that plays with the fact she's like, you know, and they've done this in the movies, but she'd be like, you know, I wonder what you look like without your glasses, you know? And he, he says something like, well, you wouldn't want to see that. And maybe they go off on an elevator to go get a date or something like that. And then the last shot of the movie is the paper hitting the ground, like the paper in the streets of the city, and it says The Man of Tomorrow. And uh, it's a great shot of Superman, like the image on the article, Superman saving somebody. It's called The Man of Tomorrow, and that's basically the movie. You could make this movie for like $100 million. And then from that point, if you want to make sequels, maybe then you make Superman more of a main character, and uh, Lois finds out that he's, that he's Superman and all that. It, w it would be a rom-com meets a, a, a superhero origin story, but told from someone else's point that they don't realize the origin and all that stuff. Sorry, yeah, because we've seen the Fortress of Solitude, we've seen Smallville, we've seen all that stuff. I would like to see the other stuff get fleshed out a little bit more, which is Clark Kent's characterization, which is one of my favorite things in the Donner movie. Um, I would like to see any action scene or Superman doing something heroic. I would really like to see people react to it and feel that feel that sense of awe of Superman's presence, this god amongst us. Uh, it's sort of like Vicky Vale in Batman 89, except Vicky Vale's not really like the main character in Batman 89, Jack Napier is. And uh, Vicky Vale is just underwritten. In my movie, Lois Lane would be very well written. I mean, and it would be a really likable actress. It would actually, I'm not gonna say Emma Stone, but it would be somebody people really like. Uh, you really relate to her. And it's, it's not about, like, that we follow Bruce Wayne and always Batman. We're not going to be following Clark Kent. We're not going to be following those characters like a Batman 89. We're just going to be following her. And I kind of like the idea of that stuff in Batman 89. I think that stuff's fun. I just think you could do that stuff better. I wondered if she chooses Clark Kent. She chooses the man because he is Clark Kent. Superman isn't Superman. He is Clark Kent. That's something a lot of... That's why I don't like that Kill Bill 2 speech. It's like, is that how you see Superman, Tarantino? Uh, the Clark Kent and all that isn't fake. That's who he is. He was raised, but that's who he considers to be his parents. He feels like Clark Kent. He just puts on this costume, almost like a little boy playing dress up and goes and pretends to be Superman. But he's just a guy. He just is Superman because it's the right thing to do. And then, yeah, then the second film, you open up the Superman universe a little bit more. Then maybe you introduce a big villain and Superman plays more of a, a leading role. And then in the third act, you can go even bigger than that and do something like All-Star Superman. But Superman for all seasons, she's basically, Superman's been gone, I think, if I remember correctly. And she writes, uh, she goes and talks to people that interacted with Superman Clark, and she does this, like, almost like a photo book of him. And that's kind of my idea of it is we go find out people telling stories about Superman. I saw this guy, like, she goes to interview somebody, and she's like, can you tell me what happened? And we kind of just get flashes while they're telling the story. And, and they're like, you know, and I thought I was going to die, and then and then he showed up. The God, the God man showed up and she's like, what are you talking about? He doesn't even have the name Superman yet. Nobody's really called him Superman yet. Tell me about the God man. Why does he wear the cape? Yeah, that, that stuff, that stuff could work. He, he, he lifted a car. What do you mean he lifted a car? He lifted the car, but when are they here? That doesn't make any sense. She doesn't believe it. She's a skeptic, really. 
But then she starts to get like too convinced and then then she starts seeing Superman at first It's kind of just rumors because he's trying to keep his identity kind of hidden There'd be no religious imagery my Superman <laughs> In fact, it would be a little opposite. It would actually be she's kind of a non-believer She's skeptical of Superman because you can't say in the movie she's an atheist or anything like but but then she gets one over It makes her less skeptical and cynical. Let's say even cynical that Lois has kind of become a cynic and then Superman kind of changes her life a little bit in Clark Kent to be like, oh, maybe the world isn't a bad place. Maybe people aren't so bad. I think that'd be a neat little movie just called The Man of Tomorrow. And it's all about that final like five minutes and what it really represents that we're now in the dawn of Superman. In the early part of the film, nobody's really seen Superman fly. There hasn't been any bun recording it. He's not, no one's able to get any footage of this guy. He's flying too fast. He makes sure that people can't see. Like at one point, maybe he he burns someone's phone with his laser eyes or something like that. He doesn't want people to know that he exists. Yeah, or it could be a period piece. Maybe it could be a film that takes place in the 80s or 90s before cell phone videos on your phone. So it's hard to film this stuff. So it's just from accounts. So it could be like, she's like, well, how's this any different from your faux sightings? Or somebody gives her a photo, but it's like an out of focus picture, like a Bigfoot photo. And she's like, really? You want me to really believe this is a guy flying? And she's like, I could tell you how I could make this photo. But, but she just she just isn't into it yet. She's like, you're putting me on this stupid story about a flying guy, are you kidding me? From like two people who saw him at this thing. At first it was just like one event, then more Superman stuff starts happening and then she has to take it seriously. But because Superman likes her, she's able to get the early stuff and get the first interview with Superman and all the stuff and, and expose him to the world in that way. Yeah, like it, to fix that issue, maybe it's a period piece. I didn't think about that, but that could fix the issue logically where because, yeah, today, wouldn't everyone shoot Superman on their phone if he showed up? But if it's a different era, you couldn't really do that. Even maybe if it's an earlier than that, what if the movie takes place in, like, the 50s or something like that? That could be really fun. And she, she's just kind of starting this relationship with Clark Kent. She gets one over by Clark Kent. Like, you could have these great scenes where Clark Kent and her go on a date. You know, the scenes that the new Superman movies don't do, where they actually go on a date and he tells her about his life and they talk and she tells him about her hopes and dreams and, and all that stuff. Stuff that you really want. Characterization, a movie. My my thinking on it would be, it would be a Howard Hawks-esque film. I'm thinking Bringing Up Baby or His Girl Friday. Particularly His Girl Friday. Or I'm thinking a Philadelphia story, but I'm thinking Howard Hawks meets Frank Capra. I'm thinking Cary Grant as Superman. And a little bit bringing up baby Cary Grant in the uh, Clark Kent. I'm thinking that kind of that kind of tone, that kind of energy, the way the dialogue bounces off. A little screwball, a little bit of a screwball comedy. I'm thinking 40s, 50s Howard Hawks stuff. But but as a Superman movie. I think that would be really fucking awesome. It has superhero shit in it, but the movie's compelling because. It's, it's just got good snappy dialogue. It's got strong characters. You really focus on the newsroom aspect and the energy of it and people competing to get stories and uh, and Clark being out of his element early on and then slowly kind of showing that he has a, a real knack for this stuff. That That's the stuff that I would like. It's all about Lois Lane finding out who Superman is and as she finds out who Superman is, we find out who Superman is. But we also find out who the man is, Clark Kent, and then we see it through her eyes. And we get that sense of wonder. Um, and that character change, that she comes, she's from one kind of person at the beginning, and then at the end of the movie she sees the world and the universe in a different way. And she sees that there's the man of tomorrow. That there's tomorrow. You know, that there's always new and exciting things to come on the horizon.